One, obviously, an a sub two is eight, and a sub three is 27. So we're looking for a way to turn that number into that number. And in the same way, turn this number into eight, and take this number and use it somehow to make 27. And take four and make 64, and make five into 125. Formulaic way, not in a pattern way, which <coughs> to find a pattern here would probably be even harder than finding a formula. Okay. So when it says rule, it means formula, which is something we've covered at least twice in the last class, in going over the, the review, and during class in the original lecture, and in the video. Okay? So what we're looking for is a formula, and Rebecca has said maybe it is n cubed. Can we cube this number and get one? Can we cube this number and get eight? Yes. Cube this number and get 27? Yes. And get 64? Yes. yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So is it a crazy formula? No. No, no it's, it's not a crazy simple. formula. Okay. But what does it take? How, I mean, how do, you, how do you get that without a cookie cutter step-by-step -step process? trying to do. You're trying to turn one into one, and in the same exact <coughs> way, with the same exact formula, turn two into eight, and three into 27, and so on. If you just write the numbers next to each other, uh, after a little bit of thinking, you can do it, okay? But there is not a way for me to tell you, hey, look, look at the sequence, follow these steps, you will have the formula. That only works so far for two kinds of sequences, and this isn't either kind. For an arithmetic or a geometric sequence, there is a cookie cutter way to do it. But if it's not that, then get into brain power, which you have plenty of, okay? But don't get too wrapped up in the idea that everything can be boiled down to a set of steps. Sometimes you just have to stare at a problem, think about it, and resolve the problem yourself. Experiment, fail, revise, Experiment, fail, revise, and experiment and succeed. Oh, I found it, okay. Um, there's just no substitute for that. Um, here, we give summation, notation. What does summation, notation mean? Sigma. Using the sigma. Sigma means adding a bunch of stuff together. That's all that means. Okay, so we gotta fill in pieces of this with, with something we can fill in. Okay, so like what, something up here, something up down here? Top is four. Top is four. Okay, why? Because how many numbers you have. Just how many numbers you have. One, two, three, four of them. So what goes on the bottom then? One. I. I equals one. And these instructions are like, first I will be one, which means there needs to be something to plug I <coughs> for I. So you plug in one, then two, then three, and then we stop at four. We could start at, you know, conceivably, if we wanted to be silly here. We could start, we, we say that this is a sub six, this is a sub seven, and a sub eight, and a sub nine. We could do that. We could say i equals six, and then it goes to nine. And then just make sure our rule, when we plug in six, gives us five, we plug in seven, gives us 12, and so on. But why do that when we can make it easier on ourselves? Start at one and go to four. That just makes a little more sense. So then we need to write some kind of a rule here that will make that sequence, make that series, make those four terms to add together. So that's our rule. When we plug in one, we need to get five. When we plug in two, we need to get 12.
here for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. Uh, start with 5 <coughs> plus n minus 1 times 7. Either that should be R, this should be N, whatever it is that they should be the same thing. Give it a shot. If you make a mistake, it's all right. We'll figure it out. Double check here. What's this last term going to be? 75. 5 squared is 25 times 3 is 75. 4 squared is 16 times 3 is 48. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 1 is 3. Sequence to tell you that, that's pretty important. If you, if I didn't tell you that, this would be pretty uh, wide open. Like you get from 7 to 25 in any way possible that I can think of. Um, so, since it's arithmetic, I'll just write it down. We have this a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times p, where that is what in terms of a sequence a sub 1 refers to the first value, the first number in the sequence. And this guy refers to how much adding, how much you're adding, which we uh, is called D because D stands for the difference, the difference between the number and the number before it. Any number in the sequence and the number before it, when you subtract them, you get the D, which you add to get from one to the next. All right. Well, we know what a sub 4 is, and we know what a sub 10 is. So how can we use that, use that information to progress? I wrote it out like this, a sub 4, yeah, and the next is a sub 5, a sub 6, a sub 7, a sub 8, a sub 9, a sub 10. And then I subtracted 7 from 25, and I got 18, and I, I just kind of like figured it out, but it's like plus 3. Okay, so 25 minus 7 is how much? 18. 18, which means? If I add, and adding is the important thing because it's, it's an arithmetic sequence. I'm adding. Then, um, there's like, you have to move over 6 places, like yeah, 5 is 18 by 6. 6, exactly. So if we take that 18 and we divide it into 6 pieces, well, that's exactly what that and then number is. And then you use that to find a sub 1, too. And then you do what? You use that to find a sub 1. So you use that to find a sub 1 as well. You could go backwards to 
A sub to three. One. So we, so we figured out by dividing 18 divided by uh, six means that this is three that we're adding each time. So we get minus three, minus three, minus three, minus three is uh, it should be four. So by taking 18 and dividing it by 6, we know that d is 3. By starting from 7 and going by 3's backwards, we know that a sub 1 is negative 3. And that's all we need. So a sub n equals negative 3 plus n minus 1 times d, which is 3. series of steps, which will wind up being even more confusing than <coughs> what we started with. Like I could say, uh, it's arithmetic for any a sub n and a sub m, okay? Take a sub m, as long as m is bigger than n, and <coughs> subtract a sub n, and then divide it by m minus n, and that will be d, right? And then take m minus n times d, Subtract that from a sub n, and now you'll have a sub 1. And who wants to look at that? Well, then you have to try to remember that, too. Right. Because I always hate all these formulas because I'm constantly like, checking back in my notes. And I have, you know, even if I put those formulas up there, it just become nonsense and plug and play, and uh, you don't understand it. But if you, if you draw this out, it's fantastic because you exactly know what's going on. There is a number here, 7, and you know you're going to add some constant every time to get from one number to the next. Well, I know how much I add in total. I know whatever that is. I'm going to add it six times clearly and get 18, so it must be 3 that I add six times to get 18. But now I figured out D. It's like pieces to a puzzle. I got that piece. I got D, and then I, I, and I can use D now to, to trace my way back to A sub 1. And there we go. Once the formula doesn't work, like this one, where you have to invent a rule that doesn't have a formula for finding that rule, um, if you're not taking the time to sit down, mull it over, stare at it for a second, figure it out, well, I guess at the, at the very least you're going to get those questions wrong. Okay. And I think lastly, yeah, lastly we are, uh, we need to find the sum. Well, as Anthony showed us on, the, on this other question, we can do it the long way and plug in 1, and plug in 2, and plug in 3, and plug in 4, and plug in 5. Uh, except for this problem, we'd have to plug in well, all from 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right? We plug in 12 numbers and add up 12 of those. Okay. Mm -hmm. all right, so there, there is a shortcut because this is it says right there, an arithmetic series. How can you tell just by looking at the rule that it's an arithmetic series? Yeah. Adding in, it's, it's a good indication. Uh, it's gotta be a, like it's a starting point plus something times i, right? Minus something times i. So, just with an add. Okay. So it's arithmetic. We know that because the directions say so. We know that because the rule is an is a arithmetic rule. So we have S sub n equals uh, S of n times A sub 1 plus A sub n over 2. So this is S sub what? Well, S sub 12. So the first 12 terms in this arithmetic sequence equal to A sub n. What's n? The number 
number of terms is 12 terms that we're adding together. Uh, what's the first term in this sequence? Nine. It's nine. Yeah, because we put in one yeah. there. So we get the first term is nine. Plus, well, what's the last term in this sequence? 72 or 72, 12 times 6 is 75. 72 so times 3 is 75. Over 2. 2 cancels with 12. So we get 6. 6 times 84. Think about this. Um, what if I instead had I equals you know, let's make it five. Start at five and go to twelve. That's the same rule. Well, it doesn't start at one, right? So it seems like this formula wouldn't work. We would start at a sub 5 instead of a sub 1. Yeah, so this would be a sub 5 plus a sub n, right? And then this would be how many numbers we're adding up. Now, this is a little bit tricky. So it would be 7. Would it be 7? Yeah. How'd you get 7? Because it's got 12 minus 5. Okay, so there's the same idea over here. This minus that, 12 minus 1, or 12 minus 1? 11. 11, right? When we do, if we did 12 minus 1, we're kind of like losing that, that a sub 1 term. There's actually 12 numbers that we're adding up, right? So it would still be 12? No, no it wouldn't be 12, because this is the number of terms that we're adding up. Oh, I see. Okay. There's not seven of them. There's one more. There's eight of them, right? If we actually wrote down the, the term a sub 5, a sub 7, a sub 7, a sub 8, a sub 9, a sub 10, a sub 11, a sub 12, we counted them, there'd be eight of them. Because your subtraction really takes your, your, your big number 12 and, and takes like the bottom five out. But the thing is, when we're talking about terms in a sequence or a series, we want that fifth term, right? So you can always, if you want to figure out how many terms there are, you can take 12 minus five and get seven and always just add one. Add one to whatever you get. Because it adds that one back on. So this would be eight terms you're adding up. The first term is a sub 5, so that's 33. The last term is still 75. Over 2. There we go. If you understand what the formula is looking for, you can kind of use it uh, in a tricky way. If you understand that n isn't just necessarily this number, but it's how many terms are adding up, then you can just say, okay, well, I'll figure out that I've got eight terms that I'm adding up. And if you understand that this isn't strictly a sub one, the first term, always the first term, it's the first term in the series that you're adding up, in the, 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 the list of numbers that you're adding up. That's the hope. I hope that as we go over these more and more times, it makes more and more sense. Want to be a little bit ahead, then you know, it's the videos that go over these more problems and go over and over and over them until you're very much clear on what I'm saying. As you watch this, it'll just confirm that you do know what you're doing, rather than correcting you and telling you, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay. So think about that. Think about your own strategies, uh, what, you, what you're doing, how you're participating. All right, let's get on another sheet of paper. Take